Hello YouTube, welcome back. This is what we're going to be learning today. How to do this. Okay, so uh, first of all, just check that out. Okay, it's a gift from my girlfriend. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, third position is a wonderful position because it offers us a few more options for tongue block splits or partial chords that I can use for um, <clears throat> great big organ sound kind of stuff, like um, to sound similar, like I'm tongue blocking on a chromatic, or like uh, <clears throat> for like good kind of Hammond B3 kind of accompaniment. In other words, I can play behind a singer and have a few more options that I get in cross art for first position, um, a lot more than I get in some of the other positions. So let's go over it. Today's lesson, is going to be a long lesson, folks. So this is something you might wanna sit back and get ready for, and it wouldn't hurt to have a pen and kind of write some of this stuff down and know, first of all, that you will probably not understand and get everything in this lesson. Most of you will not. Some of you will be, this will be a good reminder. Others of you, maybe a year or so, if you work at it consistently to understand it. So just be good to yourself and um, don't beat yourself up and hit the pause button. Try what I say, rewind it, try it again, bring it back, try it again, and don't let it, the lesson get over your head to the point where you become frustrated. Okay, so let's jump right in. The first, we're going to be breaking down what we can do with octaves on the 1, 4, and 5 chords of a blues song in third position, okay? So I'm going to give you a few things, um, a couple of different things that you can play on each chord, and then you can um, start on each one, and then when you make it through the third chord, you'll have a better idea of what I'm talking about. So on the one chord, first of all, I'm playing a beautiful double reed plate, Suzuki Manji, made by Tom Halicek, Halicek from Blue Moon Harmonicas. Look how beautiful this is, and it's just wonderful. Okay, so anyway, that's what I'm playing, and it's G. We're going to be working today in the key of A or A minor. The jam tracks that I was just using is in A minor. Okay, and it's by Quist TV, wonderful, wonderful jam tracks maker, okay, with a wonderful guitar player, Quist, who makes the coolest YouTube stuff ever. You'd be hard pressed to have jams that good at your Tuesday night jam, okay? This guy is on top of it. Okay. What we're going to do is look at each chord. So let's start with the one chord. So the one chord in our case today is A minor. So I'm going to be playing the one draw, the four draw, and the eight draw. Those will give me all the roots of one. Okay, now if I tongue block these, if I put my mouth over holes one and four, and put my tongue on holes two and three, and inhale, I get that. I get that beautiful octave. And then if I, I also put my mouth over four, five, six, seven, and eight, or, or, or if I put my mouth over four, five, six, seven, and eight, 
and then put my tongue on five, six, and seven and block three holes, I get the top one. And that'll give me those triple hole tongue blocks, give me that very cool William Clark song. That's not my dog, it's the neighbor's dog. Neighbor's dog. We have cats, a cat. Okay, so anyway, oh, excuse me. Okay, I'm back, sorry about that. So getting to the four chord. The four chord is <clears throat> super fun in third position because it's basically cross harp. Okay, so let's take a look at the root notes of four in third position. So just real quick, root notes again are the notes that define what chord we are. So in this case, minor A, B, C, D, right? So D would be the root note of D. So let's look at all of the notes, all the D notes that we have on, in third position. So on a G harmonica, that would be two draw, six blow, and nine blow. Well, really two, two draw, three blow, six blow, and nine blow. There's the two and three, and then six, and then the, ten, uh, the nine. So I can tongue block three and six and get that one there, or I can tongue block six and nine. And I have those up there too. So let's show, see what we got so far. So for the one chord, So now let's go to the five chord. You know, the title of this video is gonna be like something like uh, octaves in third position. Something, it'll be something about playing. <laughs> this kind of supportive roles or, you know, playing the root notes of, of each chord, okay? <clears throat> so when we get to the five chord, it gets a little tricky because the first root note that we have is the three draw double bend and then the second one is so I can't really get an octave split there unless I bend three out of the corner of my mouth you know I'm bending three out of this side of my mouth and leaving six there it's, you know it's it's not very musical. It's not something I want to risk playing behind like a singer, like, you know, coming out of coming out of the four, the four chord. Go back to the one. Then to the five. You know, I don't know. It I feel like it would be a, an ego thing on my part to try that in a show instead of just playing something else that might work as good or better. So what is that? Well, one of the things I can do is hit the next octave, six draw and 10 draw. And then I still get, you know, the partial chord octave thing up top and it's pure, but it, it's a little high, okay? Maybe it's not something I want you know, behind a vocalist or even a guitar player or a horn player. Okay, so maybe there's another choice here. If I hit the two five split, or just two blow or five blow, or hit them together, what I get is the five of the five. Okay, so that's very cool. It's the five of the five on this chord. And I can also hit it up there, the 5-8 split. So this is what a lot of guys, Junior Wells, William Clark, <clears throat> Little Walter, um, George Smith, of course, Dennis Grunling, Rod Piazza, Kim Wilson. A lot of these fellas 
we'll hit this on five, okay? So let, now let's review what we got so far. So on one chord, one and four split, or four and eight. Three, six, Five, three, six. Very cool. So if I were to stop the video right now, it would probably be a good idea. That's all there you really need to know to get going. But let's just keep going. Okay, so maybe now would be the time to pause the video and review what we've learned. Because I'm fixing to get more complicated right now okay so what i'd like to talk to you about now is since we already added a harmony okay on the on the five chord and we you know we didn't just play the root of five okay we put in something hipper let's talk about some other stuff we can do okay let's talk about flat sevens for a second so if i hit the one and four draw, I get the root of one, right? But if I simply exhale on that same note, I, I'm sorry, that same hole or holes, what I get is a flat seven of one. You know, it's the same thing in cross arm. If I had, you know, um, uh, we're in A minor, right? If I had a D harp, same thing as a two draw double bend so I can use this note pretty cool like at the end of one I can tag the end of one with that seven and I can create a little tension that makes it sound so much nicer when I go to the four let me show you See, so, you know, and also I can vamp with it. So I'm, you know, I'm, you know, release tension, release tension, you know, so I can create that. Now on the four chord, I have an even cooler option for sevens, okay? So, well, because I have actual options of two different things that I can do that are close to the same. If I hit the two, five tongue block split, meaning put my mouth over two, three, four, and five, and then block three and four, what I'm getting is the root of four and then the flat seven of four, okay? You can also look at it as I'm getting the root of four and the minor third of A minor. So if I'm in a minor key, this is a further way of letting people know that I know I'm in a minor key or that I'm respecting the coolest nature elements of that minor key being a minor third, the defining note, you know, of it being minor. And I'm hitting the root at the same time. So it's a very hip thing to do. So uh, here's on the one chord. Four. Okay, so the other cool thing is if I want to, I can hit, put my mouth over five, six, seven, eight, and nine, over all, you know, all of those holes, and block seven, six, seven, and eight. And then I get a pure, pure seven of the four octave or minor third, however you want to look at it, whatever chord you want to look at it on. 
so you have uh, some good shit to play, you know, behind the singer. You know, she's singing and you can just turn your volume way down and... Again, I'm one. <laughs> You know who did a lot of great playing like this was Jerry Portnoy um, behind Clapton on the From the Cradle album. You know, that was one of the places I first heard it done just super effectively, you know. Jerry just did a great job of not soloing and not getting in the way of some, you know, pretty good blues that, Cla really good blues that Clapton was putting down on that record. Anyway, um... Let's close with, I'm going to go through a piece of music here, and I'm going to play everything we learned, and I'm, I'll hold up my fingers at first, and then I'll just start to let go and kind of play more the way I would. And you can hear how much knowing this stuff affects how much I solo, even when I'm not doing it. Here we go. One chord. Uh, tag the seven.
seven four seven to four back to one five four one sometimes I do. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for watching very much. Uh, long lesson, a lot of information. Again, like I said at the beginning, really be good to yourselves. And, and don't be afraid to hit the pause button and really go back and take time to figure this stuff out. Thank you so much. Um, appreciate the PayPal's. It's helping a lot right now when I stay at home in New Orleans. It's a big deal. I love being here with my cat and my fiance Kate, who buys me cool shirts like this. <laughs> and uh, it means a lot to me, and I couldn't do it without all your subscriptions and um, without the money that you guys sometimes donate on uh, Patreon and PayPal, and I appreciate it. And like I always say at the bottom, it's always appreciated and never expected, and thank you very much. You guys have fun with third position octave chords. Good night.